Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. In this episode, the sweeter side of Chef David Chang. It's delicious, man. Foam two ways. Creativity is more about taking a second look at something. Chang's partner, Christina Tosi, makes some of her signature dishes from Momofuku Milk Bar. And you're using corn, like there's vegetables in your cookie. <laughs> Arnold Palmer cake, the corn cookie, plus a corn cookie pie, and the ultimate sweet treat, ice cream. <laughs> it's highly crutched upon. Yes. And that's that. What's that cake? Enter the mind of a chef. I feel like everyone's made jello before. Am I wrong in saying that? The sweet stuff, dessert. For children around the world, it's the goal of every meal, a reward for enduring another long lunch or dinner full of vegetables. But great menus are not complete without this final course. Desserts are left to the pastry chef, the sweet professionals. Can I be kind of like um, Bill Murray and you can be like Chevy Chase? The dessert wizard in Chang's world is Chef Christina Tosi. She's part owner of Momofuku Milk Bar and a genius when it comes to sweets. We're about to mix the corn cookie. It is the Milk Bar Sleeper Cookie. Everybody that gets a corn cookie always comes back. We start the corn cookie with um, butter and sugar. We cream those two ingredients for a minute or two. And then we add an egg. And we let the butter, the sugar, and the egg cream for 10 minutes. We call it our 10-minute creaming process. Four more seconds. Three, two, one. All right. And you can really tell the difference in color and in volume. It's not sugar granules. It's all air bubbles. Scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl, and you're gonna add your dry ingredients. Uh, we have corn flour, AP flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt, which is your average cookie leaveners, and the most secret ingredient to the cookie is freeze-dried corn powder. And we just grind it down into this powder. And then we just mix it on a low speed until it comes together. So we just scoop away. So once we scoop the cookies, we refrigerate them. And that's kind of the other secret that you want to make it super cold before you put it in the oven. Because whenever you put, you know, butter with heat, it's just going to melt out. So we're going to take the chilled cookie dough and stick it in a 325 degree oven. However, if you're baking cookies at home in a conventional oven, which is what most home baker's ovens are, you're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for 18 minutes. So nine minutes is up. We're gonna take a look at the cookies. These, to me, are perfectly baked. Corn, it for me, is like the essence of salty and sweet. It'll save the planet, and you're using corn. It's like there's vegetables in your cookie. <laughs> We're gonna take the corn cookie a little further. So one of our favorite things to do with the corn cookie is to transform it into a pie crust. It usually takes about three cookies. We put them in a mixing bowl and we start mushing them up with our hands. We're basically mimicking a pie crust that you would make like with the graham cracker crust. This corn cookie is baked off really nicely and the test to that is mushing them back into a ball. It's almost like their cookie dough again. So if you're not getting a ball, you want to melt a little butter and pour it in and just kind of knead it into a ball like this. And then we put it in a pie tin. So 10 inch pie shell. We're just breaking it up one last time to make sure the entire cookie's broken down. So we start from the center and then we usually work our way towards the edges. The secret thing that most people typically overlook is this corner right here. There's usually too much cookie or pie filling in the center there. So you're trying to get as even 
a crust as possible. So this is strawberry ice cream from our local bodega. Strawberry and corn is a great flavor combination. I left it out of the freezer for a few minutes just so it's really spreadable and pliable. This is two pints of ice cream. I kind of like to have the ice cream pie peek up in the center. So you get a real, when you get a slice, it looks almost like a lemon meringue pie. Getting a pie with a crust that tasted like a corn cookie is kind of awesome. We're kind of changing the way you might look at like your average cookie and what you can do with it. Because you're just like giving it a new identity. Seven a.m. Union Square Farmers Market in New York City. One of the original vendors here is this man, Rick Bishop. His Mountain Sweetberry Farm has been supplying fruits and vegetables to some of New York's finest restaurants. Grown exclusively at his farm in upstate New York, his TriStar strawberries retain all 51 aromatic compounds of the wild strawberry. It began here in 1985, bringing in the TriStar strawberry. The TriStar strawberry was developed for flavor. The French chefs and the little old ladies come up and they're like, this is what a strawberry is supposed to be. Tri Star is the star of three seasons, spring, summer, and fall. Traditionally, strawberries all come in in June. The day neutral, or Tri Star strawberry, will keep fruiting on past the longest days of the year. The cool nights in the Catskill Mountains tend to raise this level of sugar in the strawberries. The root system doesn't go very far. So we have drip irrigation under black plastic. We give them a lot of attention. During the peak of the season, we'll come in with you know, over 100 flats of strawberries. At the end of the day, they just disappear. So our basic premise is we're growing things for flavor. And with the TriStar, it's a perfect example of a lot more work, smaller berry, but high quality, good flavor, and it's been very well received in the past 25 years. This is one of the first foams that I didn't even realize it was a foam. We used to do it with like a tomato water or watermelon juice. This is the lowest tech sort of um, modern foam you can make. So we have strawberry juice. You just take strawberries, puree it, or juice it. And we have bloomed gelatin sheet. So this has just been hydrated in water. So I added the gelatin. We have an ice bath. And you just whisk the hell out of it. And as you aerate it, the gelatin is stabilizing because of the temperature of the ice bath. We're not letting it set like a normal gel would. We're disrupting it and filling it with air. This takes a lot of time. You just keep on whisking and whisking and whisking. The colder it is, the more you whisk, and the more air it is. It's done when it gets to be aerated, and it sets up like gel, like a jello. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like everyone's made jello before. Am I wrong in saying that? It's obviously going to increase in volume. You put this in the fridge, and it'll set up into something like this. We have freeze-dried strawberries here. So the one thing that this dish doesn't have, these strawberries, are texture. And dehydrated strawberries just have enough lightness and texture that I like. So this couldn't be a more simple of a dish. We have some sorrel. And right here, we have some sorrel juice made from uh, the sorrel leaves. So it's got a, a, just a tinge of acidity. Garnish with a little olive oil. I'm gonna garnish with a little salt as well. You could serve it just like this, but we wanna add a nugget textural component. So we have yogurt, you could use buttermilk, you can make a, a snow out of it. That would be a very simple dish, but it's uh, probably the lowest tech of uh, using strawberries. We made it non-low-tech when we added the, uh, the dairy component using PacoJet, but 
this is just a simple, very simple dessert. This is Daniel Burns. One thing that Burns love, loves more than Moises Alou yes. is ice yeah. cream. And he loves his Moises Alou. Ice cream, I actually love it more than most things. There's many more than two ways to make ice cream, but the most uh, classic is anglaise. So that's how your grandmother would have made it with half milk, half cream, and a lot of egg yolks. All right, so starting with anglaise, it's always the quality of the milk. You need milk that has a, a grassy flavor that is... Uh, so basically, like any, everything else, the better the milk, the better more the delicious answer. the ice cream's gonna be. And you just added uh, cream. cream. yes. So very little cream to the milk, you saw that. Can you make ice cream without cream? Of course you can, yes, of course you can. So with all that cream left out, we're gonna add uh, milk powder. So milk powder helps when it's freezing, then the ice crystals are less likely to form and just helps in the general stability of the uh, end product. Would you say that milk powder is like the nicotine of the pastry world? Yeah. <laughs> it's highly crutched upon. Yes. To the egg yolks, we can now add uh, sugar and this is 145 uh, trimaline. Grandma wouldn't have used trimaline, but all it is is an uh, invert sugar. So what invert sugar is, it's basically regular sugar and water taken up to a certain temperature and let cool back down. So when it cools back down, it comes into this paste. All we want to do to make the anglaise, heat this to about uh, 50 degrees, 50 to 60 degrees, and then you pour a small amount into the, the egg yolks mixture. And so we have the actual anglaise base here, and we're going to heat it just to uh, 75. We hold it to 75 to ensure that it's going to be uh, set and then also to um, pasteurize it. Just reach 75. So we just strain it, ensure that there's no lumps. Then we just put it straight onto ice. Once you have a good anglaise, then you can start working uh, with any types of flavorings to this actual base. What we're gonna do with this one is actually make a uh, strawberry ice cream. So very simply, we're gonna take 500 grams of the base that we made. We're gonna use some Boiron strawberry puree, some freeze-dried strawberries just to enhance the flavor. Sometimes you uh, can just enhance or uh, change the uh, set of the ice cream by also adding some gelatin. All we did, we melted the uh, gelatin with some of the base, and then I just simply just gonna hand blend it into the, to the anglaise that we made earlier. And now we can just take this, put it straight into a Paco Jet container. In a uh, proper freezer in this type of container, we'll only take, uh, say, four hours. So we're gonna do a dessert with peas and strawberries. So basically all we did was we made a mousse out of uh, peas. Which is delicious. To which we'll uh, just dust it also with some uh, pea powder. So we have a strawberry uh, and rhubarb compote here that we're gonna use in combination with the peas. Made a crumble with uh, quinoa. Uh, quinoa is a grain. Quinoa is a grain. Also, we have some strawberry meringues. And then just the ice cream that we just made. It's a study of strawberries, you know. You have a compote, you got ice cream, you have an unripe strawberry. And that's basically the, the dessert. It's delicious, man. We have Alex Dupac in the house. He has his own restaurant now called Empeon. In your previous life, you were a pastry chef. If we were gonna talk about foams, I thought we had to have Stupac in the house. I'm gonna show you one of the most useful foams I've ever seen in my life. So this is uh, 500 grams of skim milk, and uh, we just scraped a vanilla bean into it. Some places use skim milk uh, for their cappuccino foam. It's not as flavorful, but it foams up better. And again, the reason why... Less fat. Yeah, no fat, and it has a ton of protein. But to make this foam, we actually have to heat it up. We're gonna stabilize it with a couple of um, hydrocolloids that get along really well with dairy products. Guar gum and iodine carrageenan. And iodine carrageenan is almost always used exclusively in dairy because it has a synergy with uh, calcium. We have our vanilla-infused skim milk. 
on low speed. 2.5 grams of iota carrageenan. We're gonna drop in 2.5 grams of guar gum. Just before I add the sugar, you probably see, I mean, you can see already just by blending it, some air bubbles are already being caught in there. Um, if you let this cool a little bit, it would actually probably form a very soft gel. 100 grams of sugar. We're just gonna pour our milk mixture. This one is gonna be more like Cool Whip right. or whipped cream, something like that. Now this is a foam by definition. We, 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 we aerate it. We forced air into something. But it's actually whipped skim milk. I mean, we've actually made our own fat-free dairy topping. Don't tell anybody, dude. <laughs> you got us some strawberries. Yep. So we're making a dessert out of strawberries here. We're gonna pipe this foam onto the plate, the skim milk foam. You could just dollop it onto a plate. You could do whatever you wanted with it. But I just found that it piped really well. So we're just putting it in a piping bag. And you can see like this foam, it looks like a noodle on the plate. So this is just some brown butter that we infused with some uh, orange zest and some Thai basil. And those are just things that to me taste logical some Thai basil leaves to actually just sort of echo the flavor that's infused in that butter. We're gonna add our other foam to the mix, the orange blossom foam. This one you actually have to act, push it off the spoon. And other than that, we made some uh, soy milk sorbet. I also really enjoy the flavor of soy milk with strawberries. And I'll just perch it on that basil leaf. That is beautiful. It could be raspberry, it could be smoked water, it could be tomato, it could be anything. It's the method that sets you free. Right. And it makes that sandbox that you're playing in a little bit bigger. And I mean, at the end of the day, creativity is more about taking a second look at something. We make layer cakes at Milk Bar. They're multi-tiered with different textures and nuances that all kind of play into the same theme. So this one is all about Arnold Palmer, the golfing legend. It is a lemon tea cake. Our Arnold Palmer layer cake has a lemon tea cake, lemon mascarpone, almond tea crunch, and an Arnold Palmer jelly. It's an American classic. It's an American classic. Like golf itself. Yeah, like golf itself. This is my esteemed colleague. Courtney McBroom. Hi. It's tea time. Hi. It's tea time. <laughs> we start with a plugra butter and some granulated sugar. Goes in a stand mixer and we cream it. We add eggs one by one, add some grapeseed oil and some buttermilk, and then we have some lemon juice and some lemon extract. And we're gonna add the dry ingredients. What makes this a lemon tea cake is the tea. We literally just Clip open some Lipton tea bags, and then we use the ground down tea leaves as part of the flavoring of the cake. We toss the dry ingredients together, and then we're gonna throw them in the mixer. The dry ingredients are fully incorporated, so we're gonna spread it over a sheet pan. Throw it in the oven to bake. Courtney is going to heat up some water <laughs> and make a bitter tea. I'm gonna brew this tea for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna pour it into here. This is sugar, pectin, and the instant tea. And then I just poured in the bitter tea soak along with some lemon juice. I'm just gonna bring that to a boil and let it cool. And once it's cool, it'll become really thick like a jelly. For the middle um, textural layer of the cake is our almond tea crunch. Um, it's some almond butter, some slivered almonds, toasted lightly. Some fouilletine, which is like little pieces of toasted crepe or cookie, little flakes of those. Some confectioner sugar, some salt, and some instant tea powder. We use instant Lipton tea powder with a little bit of lemon in it to kind of bump up the Arnold Palmer flavor in the cake. So we're just gonna paddle this together for one second. Ooh. Our almond tea crunch is done. So Courtney is working on the lemon curd, which is going to be part of the lemon mascarpone layer of the cake. This is sugar. 
lemon juice and eggs. And I'm whisking them over medium low heat. I'm gonna add the gelatin and then I'm gonna add this butter and the butter is gonna melt in there and it's gonna be lemon curd. So once the lemon curd's cooled in the fridge, similar to this consistency because we wanna be able to layer it in the cake, we're going to mix that in a bowl with some mascarpone. Our um, lemon tea cake was in the oven for about 30 minutes. Just like your standard American cake, you're looking for it to bounce back to the touch when it's in the oven. You're looking for it to come off the edges just a little bit. To layer our cakes, the secret to getting just enough cake to make the three layers is to cut out two six inch circles. And then the last layer is kind of gonna be like the junky put together layer. Um, but there's no shame in that. We build all of our six inch cakes with acetate so we can build them high. We're gonna take all of our cake scraps and make our junky bottom layer. No one will ever know. And then we're gonna use the bitter tea soak that Courtney made to moisten the cake, and this will also help kind of fake the cake layer. Can I be kind of like um, Bill Murray and you can be like Chevy Chase from Caddy Shack? <laughs> <laughs> so our cake is soaked. We're gonna start layering. So we have the lemon mascarpone. Courtney will spread it around. Half of the almond tea crunch. One third of the Arnold Palmer tea jelly. Then so your kind of second jankiest or second prettiest layer goes in. It gets soaked again with the bitter tea soak. So we're gonna do the last of the lemon mascarpone again, madam. The last of your almond tea crunch, your second third of jelly, and then your top layer. Save the, the nicest for last, because that's the one that people are gonna see. The top layer of the cake, we save a little extra Arnold Palmer tea jelly for. The assembly part of the cake you'd think should be really fussy, but it's not fussy. It's fun. We freeze all of our cakes. As soon as we layer them, we stick them in the freezer for about three hours or overnight. Choose your favorite cake plate and remove the acetate. And that's that. Well, it's a real hole in one, this cake. <laughs>So there you have it. It's delicious. Chef David Chang's sweeter side. We're kind of changing the way you might look at it. You're just like giving it a new identity. You can set this aside and it's very easy. It's delicious. Everyone has made jello, right?